on Europa 2, five-star luxury is guaranteed. For us, our wow factor is our incredible service. Its passengers can ask for anything, anytime. This cruise is one of a kind, where the guests decide which ports they visit. When it's not raining, like in Belgium, it's okay. <laughs> it's up to the crew to make their wishes come true. We said, yes, of course, no problem, and now we have the problem. <laughs> On Europa 2's unique surprise cruise. Europa 2's cruise begins in the city of Istanbul, Turkey. This ship's signature approach to hospitality begins on the dock. Hold up the car and guide the guests to the reception. Not too much talking. Must not. Sasha Richter is part of the team greeting the guests. It's a personal thing. Each passenger uh, has one crew member who bring them to the ship. 370 crew members will tend to the needs of just 500 guests. It's one of the world's highest crew to passenger ratios. Our sailing is at 10 p.m. and now we have approximately four to five hours time. On this special cruise, personal service isn't just about getting the passengers to their rooms. It's also about giving the guests the choice of where the ship will go. It's called a surprise cruise. The concept of the surprise cruise is basically to do something very special and uh, also to enable our passengers to vote about the route we are taking. I will talk to you about with the pilot, so we will see. Not even Christian von Zwaman, the ship's captain, knows where the ship will go. Down to Southend, which might... The passengers will decide where we go, when to go, and uh, so also for me it will be pretty much a surprise. This is the first time Europa 2 has tried a surprise cruise. If it's a success, it might just become a regular offering. But right now, neither the guests nor the crew knows just what to expect. From Istanbul, there are many itineraries in play, featuring stops in idyllic and storied places, such as Crete, Rhodes, and Santorini. It all depends on which route garners the most votes from the guests. 055. Five. Over the course of the cruise, there will be two votes. After each itinerary is chosen, Sasha and his excursion team will have only a couple of days to plan activities on shore. It's a pressure because we have uh, not as many times, so we stay in contact, very close in contact with our agency in Greece. A few seconds after the decision, we have the chance to call them and say, hey, Give me some buses, I need a tour here and a tour there. By six o'clock, most of the passengers are aboard the ship. Matthias and George is going upstairs, please, and start with the tables and the sun beds, please. Out on Europa 2's pool deck, the crew is working hard, preparing the first night's festivities. You just continue, just take the third one, please. Eric Schutza is the public room manager. He's in charge of the six bars on the ship. Small barbarian table, please, next. Up. We got here 12 people and working for the setup. And around in the evening for the service, I'm going to have around 25 people working around here for this event. The first major event of the cruise will be tonight's pool deck party. Eric wants everything perfect. Don't forget another side place on, on 10 o'clock and everyone is here on, on the pool deck. Around 450 people, this is the most stressful moment. 
while the last few guests check in. The rest explore the ship. Every room is a balcony suite. Even the smallest are big for a cruise ship. 375 square feet, the size of a studio apartment. The average price tag for this luxury? $6,000 per person. What is most significant is that we have the highest passenger to space ratio in the whole fleet worldwide. There's no ship in the world offering more space per passenger. Europa 2 is actually a small cruise ship. It's just 740 feet long with 11 decks. But it seems much bigger on the inside. Lobbies and restaurants are more spacious than they need to be. So there's never a lineup or a crowd anywhere on the ship. As the sun goes down, so does the temperature. Just right on the front of the window, please. But that won't be a problem for the party on the pool deck. Face the stage, please. I would like to close up the roof, please. It's getting too cold tonight, you know, around 12 degrees. That's why we're going to have to close up. The retractable roof relies on a small motor that draws power from the ship's four diesel electric engines. We're going to leave it open a bit for the sound. And of course, you know, we're going to be around here, 400 uh, passengers. Night falls, and Europa 2's journey begins. Rich board, one one forward. OK, one one forward, thank you. On the bridge, the captain calls for the lines to be cast off. Station forward, let go headline, station off, let go everything. And he lets everyone know this cruise has begun. Let go lines off. Tonight and tomorrow, Europa 2 will travel from Istanbul through the Dardanelles Strait. The, the stage is almost packed, you know, people like the music, and I'm surfing on plenty and lots of drinks. Uh, I feel quite satisfied, you know. It's a great start for this 10-day cruise. But so far, no one knows just where they're headed. The next day, Europa 2 enters the Mediterranean. And the passengers gather to vote on the first four ports the ship will visit. No, but you don't need it. It's so small to walk around. There's like a little peninsula. Um, with a... Captain von Zwaman oversees the vote. It's a very warm welcome for all our international guests. The crew briefs the guests on their options. Is weather important for you? No. No, 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 no. When it's not raining, like in Belgium, it's okay. <laughs> For the first vote, the guests are asked to choose between Mirina in the north, Volos to the west, or Naxos to the south. Go for it. You can do what I say. Yes, so you're the boss. As always. As always. Most ships have months to plan shore excursions, but Europa 2's crew will have to improvise every step of the way. The guests vote with chips. Three buckets, three routes. Whatever the result, it will send the ship's crew scrambling to make plans in just the next few days. Just off the coast of Turkey, Europa 2's passengers are making history. They're voting on what ports to visit on the ship's first ever surprise cruise. After 500 votes are tallied,
Captain Christian von Zwammen announces the winner. Skiertos aus werden wir nach Naxos und Rhodos fahren. Wie es dann von dort aus weitergeht. A strong majority, two thirds of the guests, has voted that the first port of call will be the island of Naxos. From there, Europa 2 will head to Rhodes, the island of Crete, and to the remains of an ancient volcano in Santorini. Are you happy with the choice? Yes, very happy. Okay. Santorini was on top of the list, so... Of course, there might be some who expected some other outcome, but so far, generally, everybody is happy, at least those who I am talking to. The next morning, Europa 2 drops anchor off the coast of Naxos. Passengers head ashore for the first excursion of the cruise. Copy, stand up four in the water, both engines running. This destination was only chosen last night. So there's been no time to line up local tour guides. That's why Europa 2 keeps two full-time tour guides on board. Ready to explain the sights wherever the ship may go. Today, it's the Portara, doorway to the unfinished Temple of Apollo, dating back to 500 BC. But for the ship's head chef, today's visit is all business. We're looking for local products, mm -hmm. especially some fish, but also local products, which are especially for Greek. Chef Udo Grigas is Europa 2's superstar. Just 29 years old, he's in charge of every meal served on the ship. But um, mm -hmm. what kind of um, local fish do you have here? Look, this depends on the catch. Yeah. Depends uh, what the fishing boat got back a specific day. Let's okay, perfect. Find out Let's see. What we have. All right. Udo's kitchen serve more than 200 pounds of fish per day. I like this, what we do now. It's one important part of my job on the ship to go outside to check what, what kind of local products give us the islands, um, what kind of local fish we can serve for our guests also on the ship. It takes half an hour to reach the local fixer's favorite fish store, which doesn't have any fish. That's the fish from Gaston. Udo doesn't have much time. He has to be back on the ship in an hour to get tonight's dinners underway. We're just looking for some, some fresh fish, maybe like 20, 30 kilos. This will be nice. But for me, no coffee, I don't drink coffee. Oh. The fisherman's wife just told me that it's a matter of uh, minutes before the small truck with the fresh fish comes. If you want, we can have a coffee for five minutes until we see what we've got. There are six restaurants on Europa 2 that serve seafood, and each of them needs fresh fish. Hopefully, this five-minute wait will be worth it. Back on the ship, the crew is working hard to get everything ready for when the guests return from the island. Some are even bending over backwards to get the job done. Europa 2 counts a troop of acrobats among its crew on this voyage. For the first pull. All right. They're here to provide passengers with an eye-opening artistic experience. We don't do it in a circus, we do it in a theater, in the real theater. And that was the idea, okay, we can do it here also. So the, the point is that uh, uh, we don't have, for example, animals here, we don't have uh, magicians here. We just invite six artists worldwide. When we practiced, when we did your line, it was all on one level. The only thing we're we afraid of, we have small waves. Meanwhile, back on Naxos, the fish have arrived. At the moment, we just see the boxes. 
I'm not, not sure what, what it's inside and what quality of fish they have. All the good stuff will be gone in minutes. So make it quick. How about okay. you? All right. Okay, be the first. Yeah. The pieces? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Some of the pieces. We will take a some of the sides. Okay. Like six, seven pieces. We get now seven pieces of some uh, local fish like a, like a, like a sea bream, which we can serve in our uh, specialty restaurant. Chef Udo sees a few fish he likes, but not enough. The ship's food and beverage manager, Lutz Grefroth, pays the bill, and he's not impressed. You <laughs> think? The price is high, 27 euros per kilo. It's uh, really expensive. Time has run out on Chef Udo's fishing expedition. He returns to the ship with just a few fish and a problem. His guests expect top luxury, not a small fry. The chef needs to find some big fish soon. The next morning, Europa 2 approaches the second port of the surprise cruise, the Island of Rhodes. The bridge team is on alert. Docking here won't be easy. Now we have a quite small entrance. There's not so much space also for turning. Entering Rhodes is always a challenge. But today, there's more in play than just the small entrance to the port. To dock here, Europa 2 must parallel park behind another cruise ship. But there's a strong 25-knot wind from the west that's pushing the ship away from its parking spot. There's always a challenge wind, yes. Because it's a big ship, it's a big sailing area, yeah, and uh, this is always a challenge. Uh, what is our stern position now? Are we in line ready with the bow of the other cruise ship? Europa 2 enters the harbor. The captain turns the ship's bow into the wind early, hoping to neutralize its effect. Okay, next report when we are stirred to stern. Next to the other ship, he puts Europa 2 into reverse. Bow thrusters are turned on to keep the wind from pushing the ship out of position. Station aft. Position. Europa 2 maneuvers backwards, parallel to its parking spot. Now that west wind really comes into play, pushing hard against the side of the ship. Below the waterline, the ship's two bow thrusters engage the battle. At the stern, a pair of Rolls-Royce Mermaid pods joins in, turning the propellers 90 degrees to move the ship sideways, fighting the wind to close the gap between Europa 2 and the pier. As the wind is quite strong today, about 20 to 25 knots, you constantly need to keep pushing, otherwise you start drifting to a direction you don't want to. Okay, ship position. Heave up the spring forward. Mission accomplished. Hi there, this is Julia Fitzner. Could you put me through to the captain, please? The captain will want to take this call. Julian Fitzner is from head office. He's the visionary behind Europa 2. The surprise cruise was his idea. Hey, Captain. It's me, Julian Fitzner. Um, I just want to let you know that I'm going to arrive in about 20 minutes. Julian has come to inspect the ship. Thank you. So now it's up to the crew to prove their worth, pampering the guests to impress the boss. It's day five of Europa 2's Mediterranean surprise cruise. Tonight, the passengers will vote on which ports the ship will visit in the last few days of the voyage. 
But right now, the guests are exploring the mysteries of roads. According to ancient myth, Hercules founded the first settlement here. Today, it's a city of medieval fortresses and Muslim minarets. Without much time to prepare, the ship's crew has come up with the perfect way to tour Rhodes's ancient winding streets. Morning, lunch, and dinner, all the time, eating, 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 and need to do a little um, workout, and that's what we're starting to do with the, with the bike today. Meanwhile, the ship receives a special new passenger, Julian Fitzner. Mr. Fitzner, welcome aboard. Thank you very much. How's life? Could be worse. <laughs> How's the ship? We try to Excellent. live in a culture that's where we good. are part of the team, because I know 100% that we at Hamburg are nothing without our crew on board. Julian is the mastermind behind this ship. He selected the paintings, the crew uniforms, even the size of the suites. I only have a couple of minutes as a sweet spot when I first enter the vessel uh, to see little things I might not like, because as soon as everybody recognizes that I'm there, uh, things are in the way I'd like to have them. Julian's goal? to make every voyage on this ship a cruise of unsurpassed luxury. All right. Looking good. So you will never find a queue on this vessel, people queuing, or there will never be people trying to, to block or reserve anything because it's enough space for everybody. For us, that defines luxury. Everyone on board owes their job to Julian. The risotto is ready. In the galley, Chef Udo is busy overseeing today's lunch preparations. Every day we produce on Yoba 2 1,000, 1,500 uh, meals, which is going only a la carte. Make it more, more creamy. Eh? But today, the chef is on the spot. Julian hired him, but they have never met in person. He wants to make a good first impression. Oh, hi, Jeff. How are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. you. How's life? Fine, very fine. Every day we get very nice swordfish. Swordfish? Yeah. Okay. So, where is the big boy already? That's this kleine. And the schwer is not dran, very good. Top price is also good. And the wichtigste is that this here noch heile is. For Chef Udo, this big boy fits the bill. It's the perfect marquee menu item to impress the boss. Good. Okay, off geht's. Okay, let's go. The cooks take the swordfish to the kitchen to create tonight's sushi special. At almost 10 feet long, the cooks can't wait to get to work. They're certain this fish will wow the guests. We're getting this swordfish and very special on him, it's, it, it's um, still whole. First, also very good quality, very good quality of the meat and the, the sword, it's still whole one. It's happened always, the sword, it's broken or it's half damaged. But now, to getting one in this quality, it's not often. After dinner, the second vote begins. The passengers now choose where the ship will visit on the second half of the voyage. It's a choice between routes leading to either Mykonos or Paros. Soon, everyone will learn where Europa 2 will head next and how much the ship's crew will need to scramble to deliver last minute luxury to their guests. Off the coast of Rhodes in Greece, the passengers and crew of Europa 2 are on the edge of their seats. This is a rare and unprecedented cruise for the ship, where the passengers vote on the ports of call. The 
the guests have already voted in favor of visiting Crete and Santorini. Now they're choosing between two routes, one leading to Paros and Naplio, the other to Mykonos and Hydra. The vote is tallied, and the Mykonos route wins. Mykonos and Hydra won, and um, it's good for us. <laughs> After Crete and Santorini, Europa 2 will travel north to Mykonos. The ship's last island stop will be Hydra, before docking in Piraeus, not far from Athens, for the end of the cruise. With the vote over, passengers settle in for the evening's entertainment. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Artistica of the Sea. These acrobats specialize in defying gravity. But on a ship, they also have to contend with stormy weather and rough seas. It can be like performing during an earthquake. Especially when we have the situation that we have the waves with this roller roller edges, when, when, we, when you put these five rolls on top. So you can't imagine how it works on land. And then everybody was sitting in, in their chairs and they were thinking, okay, for me it's difficult to sit, how he can stand up there. The next morning, the sea is calm as Europa II approaches the island of Crete. Chef Udo is still hoping to find some big fish, so he's decided to cut out the middleman and go straight to the source. While the ship draws toward the port, Udo meets up with a local fisherman to check out this morning's catch. Fish don't get any fresher than this. The only question is whether they'll be big enough to supply the ship's specialty restaurants. Meanwhile, on the bridge, the captain is steering the ship towards the dock at Crete. Other ships would need a tugboat to lead them in, but not Europa 2. It has Rolls-Royce azimuth thrusters, which can pivot 360 degrees. They make moving sideways a breeze and do away with the need for tugboats. Once the ship is moored, Chef Udo returns. Yeah. Yeah. The fishing trip was well worth the wait. Passengers will be spending the day on Crete. Some will stay in town. We just want to walk here a little bit and uh, to see the city. Because it's very close to the center and you can do this by foot. While others will be heading into the hills to one of the few golf courses in Greece. It's a surprise cruise, and it's a surprise, but a very good one. As passengers explore the island, a motorboat tour is being prepared with a luxurious surprise twist. It's a surprise for the guests when they arrive with their Zodiac boats. We'll have a champagne boat. Chief mate Ulf Zoldeman is looking for a good place to hide the champagne. That's the correct one. So, shallow water, no waves, not so much wind. 
crystal clear water, nice scenery. The ship is not visible, so they have a little bit of feeling that they are uh, alone. Good spot. I think they will love it. We have to inflate these zodiacs, lower them from deck 10 down to the water level, get the drivers in. For us, it's important to adhere to small shapes, make big things happen. It's time to move the bubbly to the cove. Public room manager Eric Schutze has to hurry. The passenger's boat tour will start in 30 minutes. Just give the chef a hand, please. Yeah, I like the action, like the pressure, you know, and uh, you're right on time. Everything is under control now. They are all ready for the cruising and for serving uh, well, passengers. As the champagne makes its way to the cove, guests board the Zodiacs for the start of their late afternoon cruise along the coast of Crete. They have no idea what's in store for them. This surprise is a hit with the passengers and the boss. I would describe it as a big success. It's a big success, the guests are happy, the crew is happy. I think we deliver a stunning product here. Um, and again, we've proven that we can do things other ships can't do. But with three more ports left on this cruise, the surprises and the challenges they bring aren't over yet. It's day eight of Europa 2's surprise cruise of the Mediterranean. This morning, the ship will be stopping at the Greek island of Santorini. Europa 2 will drop anchor on a portion of the submerged remains of an ancient volcano. It erupted 3,500 years ago. Some say that destroyed the mythical city of Atlantis. Anchoring here is always tricky, especially today, with Captain Christian von Zwaman facing some strong winds. We reached now the caldera of Santorini, and the weather conditions are more or less exactly as in the forecast. Wind is up to 30 knots, and now we're going to find a safe anchorage. The small target area is surrounded by a drop-off of more than 400 feet. Miss it, and the anchor will simply hang free without anchoring the ship at all. The captain turns the bow directly into the wind, hoping that will keep the ship steady. But it's all for naught. Gusts up to 35 miles per hour are buffeting the bow back and forth over the target area. It's impossible to stay in place long enough to drop the anchor. And with the seabed made of solid rock, the captain is starting to wonder if he should bother anchoring at all. With no mud to sink into, the anchor could lose hold, causing the ship to drift. So instead, the bridge team decides to use Europa 2's thrusters and propellers all day long to keep the ship at a safe distance from the nearby shore. The engines are running all the day, same with the boat thrusters, and we will do maneuvering all day long. Our officers of the watch are used to it, and they are very capable to keep the ship in this very position. The weather is perfect for a day of exploring the island. Some from the ship are headed for the cable cars with their spectacular views. Others are exploring Santorini's lava fields. 
But these aren't passengers. This tour is for Europa 2's crew. We are on an excursion right now uh, in our free time from the vessel and uh, having uh, the opportunity to see uh, this uh, volcanic island here. It's cool, I really love it because uh, you can see really something of the world and uh, every, every second harbor you can get out in your free time and that's the main reason why we are here. Happy crew, happy ship. Happy ship, happy guests. For us it's important that the crew understands that each and every one of them, they are hosts. So they, they are not waiters, they are hosts. The crew is the heart of this whole operation. But most of the staff are still on board today. Some are preparing tonight's surprise. A king's ransom of caviar. Today it's the, the famous caviar night. And for sure also for us the most expensive night. Um, today we, we will use about $10,000 in caviar. The caviar is already the, the highlight of the food. Overnight, the ship travels north to its next destination, the island of Mykonos. Passengers will have all day to explore the island on foot. But the crew won't be relaxing. A family of 20 has asked for a birthday party on a beach. Yeah, yeah, good, alles gut. It's up to shore excursion manager Sasha Richter and his team to make it happen. Yesterday they came real to us and said, okay, now we want to have tomorrow a nice place and we can also want to make a barbecue there. And we said, yes, of course, no problem. And now we have a problem. <laughs> On this ship, no request is too outlandish. But Sasha has only a few hours to find the right beach. What we have to do is to clean up the beach a little bit. We have Sasha likes the first beach, but not its garbage. This is like the whole surprise cruise. The difference is it's condensed in one hour or two hours. You, you don't know what, 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 you, what we will get. Yeah. We will see. This is a nice beach, of course, but we have no facilities around. That's the point. No toilets, no electricity, no fresh water. Sasha and his colleagues are afraid the wind will be too strong here. So the search continues. Back on the ship, a small army is working on getting everything ready for transport to the beach. Beach barbecue for us means that we are searching for a remote beach where there's nothing but sand and water and palm trees or whatever. And then we bring every little piece by Zodiac to this beach. This operation requires gear for a mini restaurant, rented trucks and permits for the beach, if Sasha can find one. Back on the island, he's still looking for the right spot. It's a smaller beach, very, uh, very nice view you have here, as you can see in the background. We have facilities on the other hand, this little restaurant we can use, the bathroom, hopefully. While Sasha wheels and deals with the restaurant, the forces have landed back at the port and are packing up a truck with everything they'll need. We'll have the sun lounges and the umbrellas and the bar and the grill and the food and the music and the tents and what have you. The amount of material can range up to one and a half tons of material because we are literally bringing everything. They have just two hours to get everything set up before the family arrives for dinner. We try to figure out which is the best uh, spot here at the beach. The first over there, but we have the problem with snakes in these little bushes, and not uh, poison snakes. 
not very dangerous, but unfortunately for the guests, not very welcome at the barbecue dinner. On this side, this is a nice place as well, but a little bit windy because the wind comes from there. And now we decide to go to the middle. But now, the snakes are the least of their problems. This perfect plan is being blown away. Europa 2 is anchored off the coast of the Greek island of Mykonos. And a strong wind is threatening to ruin a special five-star beach barbecue for a family of 20. It's up to Sasha, the excursion manager, to come up with a solution quickly. We had to change the plan B. I spoke with the owner of this uh, little restaurant and we, we can do the barbecue there. <laughs> thanks, thanks God, it works. The crew has just one hour to get the restaurant ready. Tonight's guests are a large family who are celebrating a relative's birthday. They're on the way. And it will be down to the wire to have everything set up on time. The family arrives with no clue that this dinner almost didn't happen. Ja, herzlich, herzlich willkommen. Hallo. Schau. Einmal. As you can see, the table is set. All the team knows what to do. And it's awesome. It's brilliant. And that's the fun we have on the boat. If it works like this. The barbecue is on fire. And the buffet is ready. I calm down when we are back on the ship. <laughs> it's gorgeous. I never would have expected something like this on this island. Once again, Europa 2's crew has worked a miracle with no time to spare. The next morning, the weather clears for the final day of the voyage. Julian Fitzner's vision of a cruise where the passengers decide the itinerary has become a reality. Europa 2 is the best cruise vessel in the world for a very simple reason. We have the best crew in the world. The crew is the heart of this whole operation and they deliver a service which you will find nowhere else in this world. We really adhere to the theme of small ships make big things happen. It has been a cruise full of surprises. Each port was chosen by the passengers. Even the captain had no idea where the ship was going. Actually, for my opinion, it worked surprisingly well. I had no clue beforehand how it will work out. And um, actually, after the elections, I'm quite happy about the results and also about the places itself we called. Um, I think there was something for everybody we could enjoy. When it comes to providing luxury, Europa 2's crew has proven it will pull out all the stops. What a surprise.